Here we're going to be learning about geometric sequences. Now, I like this one here. I used to be good at math until they started putting the alphabet into the equation. But actually, this little picture, um, it's a pretty famous meme, but it's taken from a, a blog called Hyperbole and a Half. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's amazing. This girl, Ali Brosh, does it. She's so, so talented. They're really, really, actually, they're kind of deep too. But uh, you should definitely check it out. She's actually written two books. Anyway, we're going to talk about geometric sequences. So remember what a sequence is. It's a list of numbers. And I remember what a series is. It's a sum of the terms. And what made it arithmetic? We've learned that before. Arithmetic just has a common difference between all the terms. Well, it's a different type of sequence. Now, let's do another list of numbers. So 2, 4, 8, 16, and so on. Well, what's the pattern? Well, do you notice then the pattern here seems to be um, you always have to, you don't add the same number, do you? In this case, do you notice it? You multiply. In this case here, you would multiply by how much? Uh, so it's done here, multiply by 2 in this case. That would be the pattern. So whereas arithmetic is adding the same number, here we're going to multiply by the same number. That's what's how it's going to characterize a geometric sequence, okay? It's going to have a common, now instead of calling it a common difference, like for arithmetic, we're going to call it a common ratio. It's going to be R. Okay, and that just means we multiply by that number. Okay, now R can be a just a single number, like 2, like we just had. It could be a fraction, like 1 half or something, which is kind of like dividing because multiplying by a ratio. We still characterize it, though, by uh, the first term. So first term is still u1. So term numbers there. Okay, this is how we define a geometric sequence. So that's how we do it. Let's actually look at the nth term, then, because we have an equation that tells us what to do here. There's a new formula booklet. It goes un equals, now it's based on these two things. So it's u1 times r to the power of n minus 1. This is how we do it. This is the nth term. So if you want to find like 5,000th term, just put in 5,000 here, then you need 5,000 minus 1, and away you go. Watch out very carefully here. You do not do u1 times r. You have to first do r to this power and then do times u1. Now to find r, this is a pro tip here, to find r, you're going to divide any term by the number before it. So in other words, if we were going to find this one here, we would do 4 divided by 2, and that would give us 2, right? But 8 divided by 4 also gives us 2, and 16 over 8 also gives us 2. That's sort of how we can find r. So let's see if we can use this then. I like this one. Studies fine. Parents can do one third of their kids' math but struggle with the other three fourths. Uh, I like it. Makes me smile. So we want the tenth term in this one. Now, do you notice what's happening here? It looks a little bit crazy, but we're told it's geometric. And if we're told it's geometric, that means, well, we know the first term. The first term is just negative 2. That was easy. Well, we got to find r. How do we find r? Remember that pro tip. Take any term, divide it by the term before it. So I'll take my 6 divided by negative 2. 6 over 2 is 3, but this is a negative, so it's a negative 3. Let's see, just so you can see, let's see if it works for negative 18 over 6, because that better work. And it still gives me, let's see, 18 divided by 6 is 3, and it's a negative here. So, yep, I know then that r equals negative 3. That's one of my pieces I'm going to need, as well as u1. Well, now I'm just going to use my term, right? The nth term is just u1 times r to the power of n minus 1. Well, then I keep going then. So I'm going to try to do this and actually do the substitution. So I'll show that u10 then must be, let's see, u1, which is minus 2, all that times r, which is minus 3, all that to the power of 10 minus 1, which is 9. All right, so now you just got to figure this out. It's not 3 times 9. you got to do 3 to the power of 9. In case you don't know it, you're allowed to use your calculator in this question right here. So let's see here. This is very, very important. I want to show you something important here. Now, you you do not, so maybe I'll write this down, actually. Do not. Do not go negative 2 times negative 3 and all that, then, you know, then an that answer right there, then to the power of 9. That is not how you do it. You have to remember your order of operations. Do you remember the order of operations? 
maybe you've learned this a long time ago, it's just important because we've all agreed upon a set of rules for doing math, so we have to follow those rules. And I don't know if you've heard of it called like bed mass or PEMDAS, we've got all these dumb ways of uh, calling it here, but what really important here, because some people call it brackets or parentheses. Uh, this one, so this means brackets, exponents, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. Turns out these two don't matter which order. I mean, they have to be after E, so to speak, so after the exponents, but multiplying, dividing doesn't really matter too much. And these two don't matter which order you do them, but it matters brackets. So this could be parentheses, exponents, and so on. So remember to do your exponent first, because that comes first in this sort of rule. So let's actually do this then. So we'll do this on our calculator. So we'll say fine, u10 then is going to be equal to negative 2 times. So I can do this on my calculator. So I get out my calculator and I'm going to do, all right, be very, very careful with your brackets. I'm going to say negative 3, close bracket, all that to the power of 9. It's very important because when you're doing even exponents with a negative, it could totally screw it up. And in this case so here, there we go, we get a negative number here. I'll do that right there. Uh, well, I guess I'll write it down. So it's 19683. Was it 1693? See, 19683. So, all right, so then this thing right here then times negative 2 should give me a positive number. So I have 39366. So that'll be my 10th term. So 39366. There we go, I'm done. That's my final answer, and I've got it all solved, right? So that's the important part about this. Okay, we've got this one here solved and figured out. Now I could actually do this uh, on my calculator if I wanted to see the tenth term. Um, there's another way to do it. It would be just to start off with negative 2, press enter, and say answer times always multiplied by negative 3, right? So I'm going to go answer times negative 3. Watch. This is my second term, isn't it? If I do that, though, that means this is my third term. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. You see how I got the tenth term pretty fast? Now, that's only because we didn't need so many terms. Well, there we go. Now, why is this stuff right here actually useful? Uh, I mean, we use um, geometric sequences all over the place. I mean, nuclear physics and finance for loans when we do this thing called compound interest, radioactive decay, I mean, this stuff actually does actually show up. So although it seems really annoying with just dumb numbers, it's actually used for stuff later on.